Hey guys, Richard here with E-Bike Reviews and Adventures. So we're going out for another ride. I'm going to be taking again the Hay Bike Ranger S. I've been riding that a lot recently. Uh, and uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of different things. There's a lot of things happening right now. So we're going to talk about those just a little bit. And well, let's just get going and enjoy the ride. All right, let's get going. Hello, neighbors. All right, guys. So saying hello to a few neighbors here. Hi. So in this video, we're going to talk about a couple of things. So uh, yeah, wow, what's going on? So it's Monday morning. I'm, I'm taking the Hay Bike Ranger out again because I want to do a range test. I need to do a range test. Um, if you've been following some of the other videos, you know that uh, my initial uh, range test slash review of the bike was that we got 21 miles out of it. But that's because I was riding it pretty hard and I was trying to work through some issues and and uh, it wasn't real, wasn't real accurate. So I want to get out and do a real range test. So I know what this bike is capable of based on my riding characteristics, uh, my riding conditions, so that I know if I can use it or not for certain rides. So on Saturday, and you may have seen uh, a couple of my short videos I put out, but on Saturday, I was out scouting a, uh, a new route to take my riding group on. And I was with a friend and we were out buzzing around and I was on the Mafio Basalt because it's a long range bike. And I started having problems with it after about seven miles and and uh, yeah, just really disappointing. So I couldn't complete the trip. And uh, yeah, so now I'm working through those issues with mock wheel to try to get the basalt up and going. And that's a little frustrating because I've got three, let's see, over the next 10 days or so, I've got three group rides planned. And these group rides are anywhere from like 25, 30 miles or so. And, you know, I'm, I'm responsible for two of these rides. So I organize them, I kind of get them ready and, and uh, you know, set things up. So I've got people in my group that are relying on me, counting on me, and uh, <laughs> that's all right. Thanks, Dave. That was my neighbor, Dave. He was going to give me the sidewalk. That's that was nice of him, but no, I share the sidewalk, especially uh, when e-bikes are allowed in my area. E-bikes are allowed on the sidewalk, but you still need to share. And so I try to do the courteous thing and give pedestrians the right of way and not intimidate or scare or anything like that. But uh, anyway, so yeah, so the mock wheel basalt gave me trouble and working through those issues. So I've got these upcoming rides, so I'm probably going to have to rely on the mock wheel scoria. Now, I love the bike, and you know I do, but I don't typically take that on long rides. Uh, sometimes my daughter takes it on a long ride when she goes with us. So she likes that bike because I can still get about the same distance. It's the same motor, same battery, so I can still go long distance with it. It's just not my preferred long-range cruising bike. But because of Saturday's events, I decided it was important that I get the Hay Bike Ranger out just to see how far I can rely on it. Uh, so I'm gonna you know, get out away from our immediate area here around the neighborhood and, and just see what we can do. They advertise that it's good for 55 miles, and you know we know that's probably not even close to accurate because that's in laboratory conditions and the real conditions are usually about half so I'm hoping to get you know I'd be thrilled if I could get 30 miles out of the bike I'd be real thrilled again based on my riding conditions my body weight my speed I typically like to go fast but I'm gonna to try to keep it around 15 16 miles an hour for this ride and we'll see what we get it'll probably take me a couple days to figure it all out because I don't anticipate that I'll be doing 30 miles in this one trip right now because I do have other things I gotta get done today. So it may take a couple of days for me to get the results, post this video. Oh, let's see, what else is happening? So, I released a video this morning about um, it's just a short video 
about Hemingway, another brand that I, I really like. They had a, a, a recall. Yeah, it's noisy. They had a recall on the Hemingway Pony. That's a brand new bike that they released uh, just a couple of months ago. And if you're not familiar with it, for some reason, you haven't seen it, it's a uh, mini bike. I mean, it's a mini, mini little little thing. It's real lightweight. And, and I mean, you can pick it up with one hand and you can almost put it in your pocket. I mean, it's just a real small thing. But uh, they announced a recall and said that, you know, they listened to their customers and there's some concerns and, and some other things going on. And they did say other factors and they just left it at that. But due to all that, they've decided to recall it. So they've canceled all pre-orders, orders that haven't shipped, and orders that have shipped. They're going to work with the customer to compensate. Uh, they didn't say they would have them ship the bike back because technically there's nothing wrong with the bike. But they're going to compensate those customers appropriately. Well, when you start doing a little digging, uh, Micah over at Electric, Electric, El Electric, I think it's electric. Um, he has an article on his website that kind of tells the story, and basically, uh, Hemingway got sued by Jackrabbit. So, if you're not familiar with Jackrabbit, Jackrabbit has an almost identical bike, but they've been in business for about five years. So, Jackrabbit uh, sued Hemingway for uh, patent infringement because they basically stole the same, well, allegedly stole the, sa the same design and and produce the same bike and so that's where the confusion is people are saying hey why wait a minute this is almost an identical bike and and of course they're selling it for dollars cheaper than what jackrabbit is so naturally it really upset jackrabbit so that's the real reason behind the, the recall there it's not that there's a problem with the product it's just that All right, lady, you gonna let me through because if I do have the right of way. Thank you. Whew. Boy, I tell you what, it's early morning here, and all this morning traffic. School's out, so we don't have school traffic. But everyone trying to get to and from work. It's a little crazy this morning. I will be doing another video, separate video. I was thinking about not doing it, but I think I will talking about some other news that came out uh, this past week, and that is by Electric. Now, everybody is familiar with Electric. And I don't want to share too much here because I don't want to just repeat myself in the next video, but um, basically Electric announced last week that they have now sold 5,000 of their trikes. And they just released their trike, oh, what was it, sometime last fall. And they've already sold 5,000 of these things. So that's a huge number. And I would, I would mark that as a huge success for them. And so that video is going to be coming out real soon. Because I do have some additional thoughts about that. And about trikes in general. So I'll be looking for that video. Alright, so I did get an email back from Haybike this morning. And, you know, I don't think I'll ever get an official response out of them as far as the speed on this bike. Uh, they just kind of tiptoed around it a little bit, but, um, and, and, uh, well, let me say this too. I've been on social media a lot, talking to some other folks, and, and I discovered that the Haybike Tyson, which is also, uh, one of their newer bikes, apparently those folks are a little disappointed too, because the Haybike Tyson was advertised as a 28 mile an hour bike, but you can actually only go 28 miles per hour, one, one, uh, one customer described it as you can only go 28 miles an hour if you're going downhill and you know you're pedaling your butt off and that's kind of how i feel about this one so I, I think that's just how the bikes were designed i don't think we're gonna see anything official come from hay bike about that um so you know i've almost got my head wrapped around the whole idea now that this is a a class 2 20 mile an hour bike not a class 3. so as long as you uh, you know approach it from that point of view it's a still a great bike but a few little quirks we had got worked out, so uh, I'm enjoying it. And that's probably why I ride it so much, is because I really do like the bike a lot. But I did get an email this morning, uh, an answer to one of the questions I had, and that is the torque rating. 
because I, I did notice that you know the torque on this bike, the power on this bike to get up hills and things uh, isn't isn't the greatest. It's not bad. Don't get me wrong. It's not bad. If you have a lot of hills in your area or something, then it might be a little bit of a problem for you. Um, and the only reason I noticed that I was on the boat ramp right down here at this park, and I happened to be on the boat ramp, and I was trying to get back up the boat ramp, and it was pretty sluggish. And on their website, it doesn't say. So I contacted them, and they told me it's 80 newton meters. So 80 newton meters in the bed. Um, you know, the lowest bike that I have tested that as far as our torque rating was the folding ox that folding ox had a 52 newton meter torque rating and it was still a really zippy little bike so if you can imagine this is an 80 newton meters so uh, it's pretty it's pretty good the best one that I have tested so far of course we go back to the mock wheel and the mock wheels they have a torque rating of 96 uh, 90. No, I believe it's 96. So, you know, considerably better. And you really feel it. I mean, you, that bike has a lot of power. So, I was happy that I was able to get an answer out of them. Customer support has been really good from Hay Bike. A lot better than Mach Wheel and a lot of other bikes, uh, manufacturers. Uh, they've just, they've been very responsive. Initially, it was a little slow, but then I learned that, you know, they're just, they're busy. They sell a lot of bikes, they're busy, and so sometimes it takes a uh, two days to get a response, but usually usually one day. And in my opinion, that's acceptable. So, I was happy to get that response from them. I hope that, uh, you know, my reviews, I, I try to provide honest reviews and give you people my honest opinion. And... You know, I hope that the reviews I've done on this hay bike, even though I've been a little critical of it, of the uh, the Ranger S, I hope that maybe one day hay bike will work with me again on another product. Uh, you know, one can hope. That's what keeps these this channel like mine alive, because you continue to get new products in and you get to talk about them and experience them and share share opinions with people. But certainly, if you're very critical about a product, then that company's, you know, they're never going to work with you again. And, and that may be the case with Haybike. And if so, that's okay. I will continue to provide my honest opinion about the products I review. Because that's just who I am. So, here's my favorite little park. You know, I've been here before. I'm going to zip around here. But here's the thing. I'm wanting to get some range on this bike today. So I think what we're going to do, we're going to go up and over the bridge there. This will be the first time I've taken a bike up and over that bridge and taken it further. So we're just going to go and see how the path is. I've seen other people riding it. But we're just going to go check out the path and see how good it is. We'll go from there. So on this incline right here, the uh, Ranger's actually doing really well. As long as I just use pedal assist, I'm not using a throttle. I'm just rotating the pedals, really no effort at all. It, it climbed that uh, no problem right there, so that was good. Whoa! That was a snake! Woohoo! That was a snake all curled up. He was against the uh, right against the wall. He was all coiled up though. Don't know what it was. I'm not going to go back and look. I just have to remember it when I come back through here that he's there. Maybe we'll get a better look at him. Let's stop here for a quick second because... Man, this is a beautiful sight. We'll switch to the other camera. So I drive this way all the time, but I've never ridden a bike this direction. So this is a new experience for me. We'll see. Here comes some uh, another bike. We've got some pedestrian traffic up here. We'll slow down and let her go through. That's okay. 
Hello. We're all right. On your left. On your left. Sometimes when you sneak up on folks like that, they get a little scared. You can just tell by the way they the way they react. And that's unfortunate. I'm not trying to scare people. Maybe I should have called out a little sooner, but traffic is so noisy. I waited till I got a little close. Maybe I should have given her more warning. But I have given people warning that I was actually still quite a distance from them. And I'd call out and, oh my goodness, they jump and get all scared and I'm gonna let this guy go through. Hello. Apparently he doesn't like the bike lanes either. People are crazy. Oh my goodness. So where were we? Oh, so LCD displays, they're not always real accurate. Some of them are more so than others, but... Um, one thing I have noticed about the Ranger is that the battery indicator does kind of fluctuate a lot. Uh, the other day when I was running the battery down and it was down to, I think, what was it, one bar or something? No, I, I ran it down to zero bars. That's what it was. But then when I stopped the bike, it jumped up two bars. And it's like, you know, that's there's a big difference there. So I wish it was a little more accurate. But the only way to know for sure the accuracy of your bike is to ride it until the battery goes dead, right? And then you know what kind of mileage you're going to get based on your riding conditions and your characteristics so yeah that's what I always recommend folks to do there's nothing like knowing what your capabilities are and all right so we got a squeak that just started And I think it's coming from the crank down below. So that's a little bit of annoyance. Did it start when we went through that little bit of water? Did something get wet maybe? No, I think it's, I'll have to watch the video. I think it started actually before I hit that little part of the water in the road. So, I don't know. So for my range test, I'm keeping it mostly in Pell Assist 3, and that's set for about 15 miles an hour. And that's what we've been trying to maintain. I've been using the throttle a little bit, but mostly just pedaling. And effortlessly, too. I mean, I'm not putting uh, really anything into it. So that's one thing nice about cadence sensors is that you really don't have to put anything into it. You just need to be able to move your legs and rotate the pedals. Okay, so it looks like we just dropped one bar here. So, almost nine and a half, that means 12 miles. So we've gone 12 miles now, and finally dropped one bar. So, yeah, I'm happy with that so far. You know, if you do the math, I should be able to easily do 25 miles. Now we can say we made it to Costco. I am probably, uh, well, let's see, we're about 13 and a half miles from home. And... The display just dropped two bars. Now it's up one bar. So it really makes me kind of nervous until I get this range test done so I know exactly the capabilities of this bike. It makes me just a little bit nervous. Good morning. Good morning. Did I squeeze past you? Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I saw it when I came through here earlier. Is it dead? You know, it looked like he may have been. He was all curled up. Yeah. So I if he was... I jumped the wall and walked past it because I wasn't about to walk right by. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw him as I was zooming by. As I saw him at the last minute, but yeah. I think maybe he was dead. I'm not sure. Okay. I saw another one, right? I went up to uh, Heritage Harbor, like uh -huh. I was going to Costco. Yeah. I saw another one there, and he was he was a big one. Yeah. And he was right on the sidewalk. It's just a black racer, right? I think that's how it was. That's what it looked like. Right. So... We'll see. I've been nervous ever since I passed it the first time and now I'm like paranoid about everything. 
<laughs> I understand, nobody likes snakes. <laughs> Enjoy your walk. <laughs> it's alive yeah <laughs> good luck <laughs> that got him excited, you see that? <laughs> okay guys, so it's been a few days since uh, I started this little range test here and uh, we're just zipping around the neighborhood right now and we're down to, well, I was down to zero bars and it was flashing and now that I've been sitting here for a moment it came back to one bar but you know I'm guessing we might get another mile out of it and if we did that means we'd uh, our range test or our range is about 29 miles now about 10 miles of that is me pulling the Toby trailer here which is about 50 pounds so um, you know it kind of gives you an idea that I was pulling a little bit of weight not a lot for about 10 of those miles I am about 245, so that adds a little weight to the bike, so depending on your riding conditions during this ride, uh, it was mostly all flat. And let's see, what else? Um, not only was it flat, oh, pedal assist 3. I did almost the entire ride in pedal assist 3, very little throttle, okay? Uh, occasionally a little bit of throttle, uh, but mostly just pedal assist. So that gives you an indicator right there. Now, something I did note. Uh, when we started out, our speed in Pedal Assist 3 was running around 15 miles per hour or so. And now as the battery started dropping, and it does drop really fast once it starts going, um, you know, we were averaging uh, about 11 and a half miles per hour is all it would give us. So, hey, that's about it for this range test. So I hope that was helpful to you. If you have any questions, let me know. Drop them down below. I'd be happy to try to get back to you. Uh, and if you appreciate this type of, uh, these type of videos, please give me a, a thumbs up so I know that you do. And it helps the YouTube algorithm as well. Until the next video, ride safe.